Curry at Breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 Nine minutes before eight is the time. Come back to your stories about the vaccines. But let's bring into the conversation and to herald another piece of great news for how hard everybody is working in this field in Britain. Uh, we become the first country to start the world's trials to explore mixing and matching vaccines in the hope it could minimise supplies, supply issues here and, of course, elsewhere in the world. So hopefully another British first. Here with details on that, Conservative MP, Vaccines Minister Nadim Zahawi. Uh, in simple terms, uh, Minister, of course, you'll be aware of all the health issues here and everything else. But in terms that I can understand, what is it that uh, these fantastic scientists are hoping to pull off? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. So we've put uh, £7 million to work through the Vaccines Task Force for these scientists to conduct this study. Uh, these vaccine studies have done in the past on hepatitis, of course, for adults, on children with measles, mumps and rubella uh, vaccines, uh, where we look at uh, mixing uh, uh, the vaccines and see how effective they are. And of course, at the uh, interval, time interval between doses of four to 12 weeks, um, it's part of the overall leadership that we're taking in terms of the COVID research in uh, helping not just the United Kingdom, but the whole world. Now, for your listeners, uh, just to be clear, this will not impact my deployment uh, program. The work that we're doing at the moment, so if you've had the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, one of the 10 million people have had the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, you'll get the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, your second dose. If you had the Oxford vaccine, your first dose, you'll get your Oxford second dose within that 12-week period. That deployment carries on. This is research into the future. They won't report until uh, uh, the summer at the earliest, but it helps us help the world as well, because we've got to remember, no one is safe till the whole world is vaccinated uh, and, and is safe. Okay. That's, that's the, the, the sort of working uh, uh, target that we've got, and we continue to lead the world in, 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 in COVID research. And, 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 sequencing and, and of course now in this and let's underscore it and it was a phenomenal figure reached yesterday more than 10 million and if you'll allow for countries with smaller populations britain is an absolute world beater and and it's a fantastic success story i have to just represent to you some of the concerns of some of my listeners though minister i'm sure you understand that for instance one uh, lady phoned her mother had her first shot in december and she's having to wait and the ladies worked out that if she doesn't get it by the first week of march that period will go. Um, if you have concerns, I know you're not to contact your surgery. Is this going to the 119 number as well? For people like that, and there are a few out there who are getting nervous about the interval, Who? what do they do, Minister? My message to your listener very clearly is uh, her mother will absolutely get her second dose within the 12-week interval. We're beginning uh, uh, to make sure that we have the stock and, of course, the uh, ability to deliver that and the NHS will be in contact with her uh, to offer her her second dose but the NHS to do it the other way if she has concerns if it gets to the the last days of it is it the 119 number minister what what should she do so if she has concerns contact 119 or her GP uh, oh, okay that, that's that but, but I don't think that will be necessary because we are already in that phase of deployment where we start second vaccination second dose um, in March. Okay. That's already in, in, baked in the, in the plan. Uh, now, one area I would think you're already alive to, this was reported earlier in the week, is some housebound people. Again, I've heard from them and I've heard from sons and daughters on emails and calls. It, it would appear that while there are many areas that are a success, there's a lot of work to do for some housebound folk. If you agree with that, what are you doing about it, Minister? There is a lot of work uh, to do. So um, we are contacting each and every primary care network so this is five or six gps in a network in an area uh, to go through with them how many people they've got in that category in the housebound category and where are they up to because we've got to meet that deadline by mid-february we've already vaccinated 90 percent of the over 80s 90 percent of the over the 75s and now 50 percent of the over 70s but the housebound are incredibly important in the same way we did with residential care homes for the elderly we began um, you know, just a week before Christmas with six care homes. Last weekend, we completed over 10,000 care homes. Primary care networks, GPs will do this and will do it well. I'm, co I'm absolutely confident of that. And we'll put the support in where they need it to make sure all those who are housebound uh, get that vaccination. Anyone listening who's concerned, please uh, uh, you know, do get in touch um, or just, you know, go online and and and, and well not all of them can get respectfully minister not all of them have the ability to i wonder if we again we look to the 119 service here do we if you can't then get in touch with 119 or of course 
your GP, but the plan is in place. We're going through with each and every primary care network exactly who they've got on their books and have they met that target and if they need additional help to meet it. Okay, one last one, which if I may, I'll ask my one of my colleagues to pass on to one of your colleagues. There's a, a woman whose mother is staying with her. She's 84. She's broken her back. Her appointment for her vaccine is in the Scottish Highlands next week. She cannot move it down here. She's looking at a 1,200-mile round trip, which I'm sure you wouldn't want driving through the ice and the snow. You don't know about that individually, but can I ask my team to present it to one of your colleagues and maybe have a look at that? Because it would seem a rather perilous journey to undertake with an 84-year-old woman. Is that is that safe to say, Minister? Can we do that? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Please pass it on to us. We've put in a lot of resources into the Scottish NHS as well, including building... Yeah, mum, uh, mum's in, I think, in Suffolk or wherever it is. So, But we'll, we'll, we'll pass it over. You, there's no way you can know about individuals. What you can know about, of course, is this exciting and bold ambition to have 15 million people vaccinated 10 days to go roughly 5 million to go you'll be aware more acutely than i minister we've only hit that magical 500 uh, thousand plus on one occasion since the 11th of january we've come close the 23rd of january 490 the 22nd of january 480 Minister, can you put your hand on your heart and say you're going to average 500,000 a day over the next 10 days to get to 15 million? We will get to 15 million. We got to 600,000, I think, two Saturdays ago. Um, uh, 598389, just yeah, to... Just, 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 just almost I know. there. <laughs> That's uh, my job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident. Uh, we've got a great team. Uh, you know, we've got the NHS, GPs, hospitals vaccination centres, the army, the army of volunteers, right. uh, all working away, and I'm confident we'll hit the target for mid-February. I, I, I'm, I'm not disputing the efforts that you and all your colleagues are putting in. I, I'm just, and I want it, I'm ju I, I want it to work, but I'm just saying yesterday, 374,000, the preceding day, 350,000, the day before that, 319,000. Why are you so confident? And if you're wrong, what will you do? Well, one, uh, I will come on your programme and you can hold me to, to account for it. You have I'll a date. You have uh, a date. I've hit the target, I hope, uh, but I, it, it, I'm confident that our plan, uh, our deployment plan, is to make sure we hit it. So here's the challenge, Nick, and, and you'll understand this better yep. than most. It's not just about volume, it's about precision, because I've got the top four cohorts that we're targeting of the most vulnerable. That's 88% of mortality that we need to make sure we hit. You've just asked me about those who are uh, you know, at home and unable to get to a vaccination site. Um, so it is about precision as well as volume. And I'm confident that uh, the plans we've got uh, for the 15th will deliver on that target of offering the vaccine to the top four cohorts by that mid-February target. Happy to come back on your show and, and, and talk about it. Let's make that a date. Just lastly, a couple of final points. There's concern that possibly teachers should be elevated up the cohorts. The Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, Dame Cressida Dick, arguably, under, uh, sorry, understandably argues that so should police officers. Do you ever see an, a, a, a moment where you might look at certain employment sectors rather than age or health sectors? So if you go beyond uh, cohort four, so we're, we're, we're very close now to going to five and six, and then seven, eight and nine, we will capture a lot of teachers and police officers who may be judged by their GP to be clinically more vulnerable and therefore eligible to be in phase one. Once we've done phase one, which is the top nine uh, calls, that's 99% of mortality because this is a, you know, a race against death. You, you, you've heard me say that to you, to you yes. before. Yep. Then we move to phase two. Phase two, we will ask the JCVI, the Joint Committee, to look at, as the Prime Minister said, teachers, police officers, shop workers, anyone through their profession have to come into contact with much greater volumes of the virus um, to look at that. And then they will advise us as to what, who we should prioritise for phase two. Obviously, the ones that are vulnerable will get be, are already being prioritised in phase one. Oh, I see. OK. And when would that be then? C can you say how many far so, weeks, how many weeks off that may, might may be? So, so, so my target is still mid-February, but you okay. can work out uh, that, that uh, obviously, depending on, on vaccine supply, because that's the limiting factor. At the moment, I've got a deployment infrastructure that can uh, deploy as much vaccine okay. as we can get our hands on, but we will keep going beyond the, the, the uh, 15th of February as fast as possible to get down to the, to the top nine. It's about, you know, just 32 million 
uh, people in in the UK are one to nine. All right. Um, so so it's a big target, but but we will get there. So here's the thing: uh, when you hit that figure, as you're confident, uh, come do come back on my show. I'll eat my hat or humble pie or whatever, and gladly do that if you manage to do it. Because we're going to have to hit five hundred thousand a day, Minister. That's my final final point. You've got to hit that number. So the best of luck to you. Thank you very much indeed, Nadim Zahawi, Vaccine Minister, appearing here on LBC. Where it's one minute after eight. News is next. On your radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, the UK is starting the world's first trial to test mixing and matching coronavirus vaccines for the two doses. The government-backed study will first look at whether it's safe 